Greetings friends, welcome. Today we're looking at Git Fetch, which is the ability to pull the latest updates from a remote repo down into your local repo. So anything that other users have pushed up, you can then get hold of and be in sync with the latest version for a repo. Um, now when you do a Git Fetch, nothing, it can appear almost that nothing has happened, but it has actually created these objects locally for you. Uh, but you still then need to do another step. You still then need to do a merge. Um, but to understand what Git Fetch is actually doing, we're going to use this visual tool here so we can see how the internals change and when they change when we're doing this kind of operation and git fetch um, okay so I'm gonna try and set this up before I do though if you find yourself enjoying the video feel free to click that subscribe below change the alert icon to all and you'll get updates for future videos all right so the scenario we want to create is we've got a remote repo we've got user one which does an initial check in here and creates file one and then we'll have user two which will then add file two and then we'll go back to user one and see if we can do a git fetch and pull that into their repo so this is where we're going to try and get to okay um so let's create that remote repo first so let's do um let's just create some fetch demo here and i'll grab the url for this and then in here let's create a user one and also a user two folder uh, I'll go into user one and we'll we'll clone that new repo, that fetch demo repo into here. And then we'll do that initial commit of where we create file one. So if I do test into file one and we uh, we add that into the repo and we just give it an initial commit. Now, I want user 2 to grab that, so let's go into user 2. We'll clone the... Actually, I needed to push that up. Uh, let me go back into user 1. Uh, user 1. And we'll do a git push. So that so we've got file 1 locally. We've pushed it up to the repo. Uh, and now we want user 2 to, to get hold of that to start with. So let's go into user two and then I'll just clone it for this one here. So I'll clone it locally. And then you so if we look at the log, we've just got the initial commits. Yep. Yeah. Let's make it smaller so it doesn't wrap so much. Um, now we want to create a new file here. So let's again let's just put some tests into a file two, like so, and add that into our repo. Um, added file two. Now, if I push that up, this is the scenario where we can now try and get this file two. User one wants to try and get file two. Um, so let's clear that out. Go back into user one. Sorry, whoops. Uh, user one. And now, if I run the um, the the tool to get the visual, the internals of Git again. This is a scenario, that's our end scenario. Um, now I've run this, let's see where we are now. So currently in user one's repo, we've just got the initial commit here and it's pointing to file one there. User two created file two and it's in the remote repo. So if we do a git fetch now, it will pull that down. Uh, but as I say, nothing else will really change externally, but internally we'll see it get created in here. So let's do um, a git fetch. Like so, and then run our tool again to examine um, git internals. You can see we've got two commits there now. Um, so I'll do this uh, in a new one here. So we can compare them. All right, so here we are. We're, our pointer, our head and our main pointer are still pointing to the initial commit. But there's a new commit in here now that points to file two over here. So this, this change up here it is the change that user two made. We did a git fetch and it's it's pulled it down into our repository, but we're not pointing to it. Our branch pointer is still pointing to our initial one. Um, so when we look in here, if I do a git status, um, it's saying, yeah, we're one behind and we want to do a git pull. Now, a git pull, by the way, is the combination of a git fetch and a git merge. Um, and we, we've done a git fetch. So... If we do a git merge now, 
what we'd expect is for this main to end up pointing to file two because in this case, there's gonna be no merge conflicts. It's just gonna do a fast forward merge and change these pointers to point here. If there was a conflict, then you're gonna get um, uh, you're gonna get a different commit there. But in this case, it's just gonna fast forward it for us. Um, okay, so that's where we, so we started off here with user one, just the initial commit. We did the fetch, which pulled down this guy here but our main still points to this. Now we want to update our branch to point to that latest one. And that's what we do with the git merge. So if I do git merge, it knows that we've got a remote branch and it will, it will work this out for us. And it will do just a fast forward merge. And so if I run our update again now, and then come back into it here, I'll just get this to display it we'll now be back at that um, diagram that I showed right at the start, whereby, if I just clean this up, our branch pointer now points to the added file to commit. Um, and everything here is now in sync between the two users, user one and user two, are both pointing to this commit 6B14, where we added file two. Um, okay, so there you go. That's what git fetch does, brings it down for you uh, and then allows you to update or operate on that as you see fit. So it's a... <clears throat> Um, a, the, it's the first part of a git pull uh, it allows you to operate on it a bit more um, granularly than, than git pull okay hope that was interesting hope that was interesting thanks very much for watching uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked it thumbs down if not and i'll catch you next time bye